All right, Dead Pikachu here, and I'm bringing you guys an awesome Red Dead Online guide about the new rule that came out this week, the Naturalist rule. And I'll be going over the Trapper as well to show you all how to access these awesome new garments from the legendary animals that are available in the game. So most important thing to do is to actually get that Naturalist role and rank it up. Because as you rank up that role, you'll have access to way more legendary animals. So I am going to show you how to rank up that role in the fastest way possible so you can start hunting these animals as soon as possible. So first thing you're going to need to do is go over to the town of Strawberry and you're going to meet Harriet there at the lodge next to the sheriff's office and just simply give her 25 gold bars and then you'll have the naturalist kit where you can start taking samples of animals. So here I'm at Harriet Davenport and her location is right next to LaGraw. She has several locations throughout the map but I like the one in LaGraw if you need to see her specifically because she's so close to the fast travel post. So let's take a look at her menu here. So there's a sell, a buy, and a missions. So the sell, you get to sell the samples that you take from animals from here, but let's take a look at that later. First, let's figure out how to even acquire these samples. So from the buy menu, she will have sedative rounds for the varmint rifle. Make sure to purchase these, you're gonna need them. And there's a sample kit that you got for the 25 gold. The wilderness camp, you just set that up. You can craft at a campfire if you need anywhere on the map. Blending tonic, it just reduces your scent. It's like a scent cover. Hardy tonic, it doesn't let your weapons wear. I mean, these tonics, most of them, I don't go for. Like the weight gain, weight loss, that has something to do with your stamina draining and your health draining. Animal reviver, though, I would get. Go ahead if you have the money for it because you can rank up your progress reward, which will give you some naturalist XP, and you get 13 XP every time you revive an animal. Now, the pheromones... I don't recommend, I mean, they only work when you encounter the legendary animal. And by the time you encounter the legendary animal, you don't really need them unless you lose them. So I don't really care for those. The pamphlets. Now, I don't really recommend getting any of the pamphlets. I max out the roll without buying a single pamphlet. I mean, if I were to get one of them, I would probably get the sedative ammo pamphlet if I were to buy one. But as you see, I never even got one and I maxed out the roll. All right, let's go now and see her missions. First thing you'll probably notice are the legendary animal sightings. Now you won't have access to these legendary animals until you reach rank five in the naturalist role. But what you can do is do the start poached animal missions. If you see there on the lower right hand side of the screen, if you push square, you can do that mission and that'll let you free an animal from a cage from poachers. But what I really recommend is ranking up this role, getting it to rank 16 at least, so you'll have access to far more different type of legendary animals. But go ahead, once you reach rank 5, feel free to pick one of these that you see that you like to go for, whether it's to sample or to hunt and skin for the trapper. I'm going to push X here and start that up and we'll get it going. And I'll show you some quick tips on hunting these legendary animals. Now I rescued the beaver from the poachers and I released it and I took out the bolt action. Now, you cannot auto lock on a legendary animal and you cannot mark it with paint it black. So, fire at it with a bolt action with express rounds if you want to kill it, or use the varmint with the sedatives if you want to sedate it. And once you skin it or take a sample, the mission will end and it will take you out of this private lobby and put you back into free roam. Now, I'm going to take you back to Harriet here and I'm going to show you that her missions reset. So if you see the animals on the list here and you don't like any of the animals that you see, just wait or come back later for the list to reset depending on how much time left. Here I only have five seconds till they reset. So I'll wait and see what comes after the reset. Now I have a boar, I have a ram, and I have the moonstone wolf. The moonstone wolf is something I want to hunt and kill. And this is great because now I can show you all my technique in hunting legendary predators. There is simple tricks that you can do to make it so much more easier to get these animals without having to worry about them mauling you. Okay, so when you start this mission, make sure to feed your character and feed your horse as well so your horse is less skittish. I feel like when your horse is full, it doesn't fuck you off as fast. So now that your horse is fully fed and your character is good and ready to go, it's a simple mission of just explore, find the clues, and follow the trail to the next set of clues until you reach the legendary animal. 
So I'm going to keep following the clues here until we reach this legendary animal. And then I will show you how I hunt him. And I prefer the bolt action. You can use a Springfield as well. Something that has a good firing rate. I really like and use express rounds. Do not use explosives or incendiary rounds because you will damage the pelt and you cannot skin the animal after you kill it with explosives or incendiary. This is not like story mode. So make sure you use express rounds or high velocity, whatever you prefer. I prefer express because they have a little bit more damage. So take out the wolves around the side and then focus on the legendary here. Now here's a simple trick to guarantee the wolf won't attack you. If you see a rock around you, try to push square and hop up on top of the rock. If you can climb on top of the rock and get off the ground, the wolf cannot jump up and bite you. So then he's just sitting there below you and you can easily pick him off with your rifle. This is one of the best techniques, and you can use this for any legendary predator. They all cannot jump on you when you climb a boulder. So find a nice boulder around the area and just push square and hop on it. And after you skin it, the mission will be over and it will put you in a free roam. Now, I highly recommend rushing straight to the trapper and turning in the legendary pelt after you skin it because the game could black screen. You can get disconnected and lose that pelt from your horse. So do your best to rush over there and sell to the trapper as soon as you can. His name is Gus, by the way. You can find him on the main map once you unlock the roll. So here we go. Legendary wolf pelt. And then we got the wolf heart. So sell them both of those. And once you sell it, you'll then have access to crafting it from his buy menu here. And be sure to skin the legendary animals. Don't put the carcass on the back of your horse. He never asks for carcasses. He only asks for the skin. So as soon as you kill it, skin it. And when you skin the animal, you end up studying it as well. So just a little side note for you to be aware of. Those are all the different garment sets that you can make, which is really nice. I want to go over his menu since we're here with him. Now he has garment sets like I've shown you before. And as you see, I've unlocked more garment sets. Just because you don't see the garment set available doesn't mean he won't craft it. Just give him the pelt and then the garment set for that legendary animal will appear. Now below it, we have clothing. There's hats. Now, be mindful of what he's asking. He's asking for the whole carcass here, a perfect carcass. So don't skin these animals that he wants for perfect carcasses. When he asks for the pelt, though, or the skin, then you skin that animal. As you see here, this is also a carcass for the deer, but the other one asks for the ram hide. So be mindful of that when you're trying to turn in these items to craft these things from him. And as well, there's coats, too. The bear coat I really like. Now, there's also a poncho, a wolf poncho, which is really cool. There's these gauntlets as well as some gloves. And push L1 and R1 to cycle through the different clothing options. All right, now let's take a look at the trinkets. These trinkets will give you a passive buff to your character once you craft them. So as you see, those are the recipes. And the info shows you what it does to your character as a buff. The one I have right now will slow my weapon degradation by 10%. I'm going to try to get them all. Now, equipment here, you can get a new variation for your bow or you can get saddlebags. And there's ammunition. Now, there's Nitro Express rounds. And these rounds are for a new gun that got released. But to be honest, I've tried the gun out myself and I can't see any reason for having it. There is absolutely no use for this gun. I used it on a three star bear and I got a headshot directly on it and it took the three star down to a one star. So it's not good for keeping pelts in a good condition. So I thought maybe that this gun would be good for legendary animals. So I tried it out on a legendary animal, the bison, and it took so many rounds to kill it, like eight to 10 rounds to kill the bison. And firing this gun eight to 10 times is ridiculous. The firing rate is so slow and there's only two rounds in it. You have to keep reloading every so often and the accuracy is awful i honestly think this gun is a joke there's really no point to having it so if you didn't buy it don't buy it i honestly see no reason to having it and if you did buy it just put it in your weapons locker that's probably what i'm gonna do like look you fall over when you shoot it 
crouching down. Like this gun cannot be serious. I think it's a joke. So if you're gonna go hunt legendary animals, use the bolt action, use express rounds, something that has a fast firing rate with a nice chamber. Like there's five rounds in the clip here. So that's great. I use this all the time when hunting legendary animals. But yeah, if you know a use for the elephant rifle, please let me know in the comment section down below because I can't find a use for it. Okay, so now let us begin to take samples so we can rank up our naturalist role and have access to these legendary animal missions from Harriet and have access to a lot more legendary animals as we rank up that role. So now that you have your sedative rounds ready in your varmint rifle, bring up the item wheel here. Take a look at the animal field guide. So when you bring up the animal field guide, you're going to see a bunch of different habitats. Now, I like the desert habitat. I feel like this is the best one to grind out levels for. The animals are so easy to get. There's two sets of pronghorns and there's two sets of rams. So there's already eight animals right there done and over with that are so easy to find. And then the armadillos and lizards in that are so easy to find too. The only one that's hard is the cougar and the black-tailed rattlesnake. But I have specific spots where you will always see them spawn. And I will show you that in this video later on. Okay, so now I will show you how to see what samples you have already collected. So open up your satchel here, and when you open up the satchel, go into valuables, and then from the valuables, you'll see different habitats. So when you click on one of the habitats, it'll show you all the animals that you have collected for that specific habitat. Now, I like to collect one of each for the whole habitat, and then once I collect one of each for that whole habitat, then I can keep track of how many full sets or collections of samples that I have already collected. As you see here, I've collected six of most. So I'm going to go to find the ones that I only have five of, sedate them and sample them so that I can have six of each of these desert animals. And then I'll show you the correct way of turning them into Harriet so you can maximize the amount of XP gained without wasting samples. So first off, let me show you my method of collecting samples out in the desert habitat, as well as how to get the cougar and the black tail rattlesnake to spawn in. So let's go out to Tumbleweed and get this going. Okay, so now that we're out here in Tumbleweed, I love to go head over towards Gus because I find most of the animals, especially the critters, like the lizard, the iguana, the Gila monster, they're over there by Gus, as well as sometimes you'll find the desert sheeps. Okay, so let's go head on over there and begin hunting. So now as I ride out towards Gus, I like to activate my eagle eye every so often to see what animals are available. Now I'm looking for doe. Those are bucks. So those aren't the ones I want, but I just want to show you my ability loadout here that I use for collecting samples. I recommend Paint It Black and Unblinking Eye. The other two cards, I leave that to your discretion, but Paint It Black and Unblinking Eye, I really recommend when you go around collecting samples because Paint It Black, you can mark the animals with the sedatives so it's easier to hit them. And then Unblinking Eye, it'll keep you in Eagle Eye for far longer, which makes looking for animals far easier. Okay, so as you see, I'm in Eagle Eye here and I see a lizard on the ground running and that's the gila monster now i'm gonna shoot it till i see the hit marker turn red as you see the diagonal lines on the hit marker become red then you know you have successfully sedated the animal and it should begin to fall to the floor press and hold square to take the sample and then you can press and hold triangle to revive it if you have revivers on you and you can also study the animal for more xp by aiming at it and pressing and holding r1 so go ahead and do that if you haven't studied it. And as I said before, you can also study the animal by skinning it. And that's if you're hunting. But if you're sedating it, then you have to aim to study. Now I'm going to look at my items here and see, have I collected six Gila monsters? And I have collected six Gila monsters. So let's keep going and finding animals to get. Now I am running out here towards the railroad tracks and I see pronghorns. Now I'm going to show you how I get multiple pronghorns. I'm going to pummel one with a bunch of rounds till I see that red hit marker. Now I'm going to get another one, the Baja. So I have one Sonoran, one Baja, and I'm going to shoot the Baja till I get the red hit marker. Now I'm going to go back to the Sonoran, right? And try to drag him closer to the Baja so the Baja won't despawn. So make sure to get out your lasso. Lasso 
one of them and drag him over towards the other one. Now, be very careful as you drag it because you can kill the animal if you go too fast and go for too long. So drag it close enough that you know you're safe and they won't despawn on you and then begin to sample both of them. So here you can take multiple samples very easily. In fact, you could start taking multiple samples of the same animal should you wanna stock up on multiple collections of samples. So there we have it, two samples taken from both of them. And now I'm gonna show you where to go to get the black-tailed rattlesnake. Now the black-tailed rattlesnake has a spawn spot that is right over here towards the very end. There's three snakes that spawn here, but the black-tailed rattlesnake is right there at the very end of the trail. So let's head over to that trail and see if we can find him. And here I am at the very end of that spot where I showed you on the map. And right away, I found the black-tailed rattlesnake. If you don't see it, just run away and come back in and it should spawn in. So there we have it, the black-tailed rattlesnake, and I'll sample that one. And now I also wanna show you where to go to get the cougar. The cougar, has a spawn spot as well, right here, right below Rascaler Fork above Tumbleweed, you're gonna see this plateau area, like the elevation of this ground is higher than the rest of the ground around it. Where the ground is higher and elevated, that's where the cougar is. So let's go over there and let me show you how the cougar just spawns in every time you walk in there pretty much. And if you don't get the cougar to spawn in, just run away and come back, but it's pretty much a guaranteed spawn spot. I found this thing like five times here at this location. So just walk in here and you should see a red dot appear on the mini map. So as you see right there, the red dot has appeared and I just begin to shoot it as many times as I can, as fast as I can. I notice that if you take your time shooting it, the effects of the sedative wears off and you're gonna have to keep shooting it more and more and you end up wasting ammo. So try to shoot it as fast as you can, as many times as you can so you can sedate the animal. And you can also revive predators and they won't attack you. So after you sample a predator, you're completely safe to revive it. It won't attack you right away, but should you come back to it later on, it'll begin to attack you. All right, so now I pretty much showed you all of them except for the Sierra Nevada Rams and Sierra Nevada Sheeps. These ones I don't get from the desert. I find that it's far easier to get the Sierra Nevadas by going towards a different area in the game. So let me show you where to go to get that. Okay, I like to go towards either tall trees or in strawberry. So over in tall trees, I like that area as well as this area over here I really like next to Gus the Trapper in Strawberry, you'll see a bunch of Sierra Nevada sheeps and rams as well as tall trees. So head on out there to get those for your desert habitat collection. Okay, so I just wanna show you where I like to set camp. Where I really like to set camp when going for the naturalist role, I really like this location here in tall trees. If you can get this camp spot, it is the best camp spot because you're right next to Gus and you're right next to Harriet and you can access your camp from anywhere across the map. So anytime you need one or the other of the two NPCs, you have a prime camp location that you can go to. So I really do like that camp spot and I wanted to show you that. All right, let's go head over towards Harriet and turn these sets in. I just wanna show you something that she does from time to time though before I turn this in. She sprays you and when she sprays you, you don't have to worry. It's not a big deal. It's basically she's upset that you killed animals. I think there's like a certain amount that you can kill before she sprays you. So after she sprays you, just wait five minutes and go back and you'll be able to access her. It's like around five minutes. That's the cooldown time till you can see her again. Okay, so now let's take a look at the progress that I've already made with the roles. So if you wanna see how far you're along with the roles, hit the start menu, go to progress, go to roles, and you can see right there, naturalist, I'm ranked 17. Now I recommend ranking up this role because it makes hunting legendary animals so much more easier. And if you're about getting the legendary animals, then you really do need to rank up this role, at least to rank 16. Because by rank 16, you'll have access to so many more legendary animals. And you'll be able to track them for longer and you'll be able to encounter them more frequently in the wild. So let's take a look at the actual legendary animal map. Bring up the satchel, go to documents, and you can see there's a legendary animal map that
that you can access and find their location should you want to go about and free roam and find them. I personally just like doing her missions when I want to go and get an animal. It's far better for me than going around searching in free roam. And the animal locations more appear as you level up the naturalist role. Okay, let's start leveling up this role now. We have all the samples, so let's turn them in. Now, bring up your animal field guide, and as you see here, we're in the desert habitat section. Now, none of these have a stamp next to them. As I give her a sample for one of the desert animals, she will give me a stamp that will be shown on the field guide. So let's give her a sample for the bighorn sheep here. So I'm gonna sell her one sample, and then we're gonna take a look and see what happens in the animal field guide. Now let's bring up the animal field guide here. I sold her the desert sheep, and as you see there, the desert sheep has a stamp next to it. Now these stamps do not stack. So once you get a stamp, do not sell her another one because they do not add up. You'll end up wasting your samples. So let's continue doing this and I'll sell her all the other ones that I have five of. That way I make sure to sell one of each from the desert animals. So let's go ahead and do this. And then after I do this, we're gonna go take a look at the catalog and see what happens once we get a stamp for each one of the desert animals. Now, as you see, I get 65 XP every time I turn in a sample. So that right away, right there is 910 XP because those are 14 samples each at 65 XP. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up the animal field guide here and see what happens now. So as you see, there's a stamp on the desert habitats. The other habitats don't have a stamp. So now I could trade this in. So let's take a look and see. So yeah, every animal has a stamp. And as I said, these stamps do not stack. So push square, trade in the whole set, and you get 1,300 naturalist XP as well as 1,000 regular XP for turning in a set. So it is much better to turn in a full complete set. You get so much more XP and you will fly through the rankings of this role. Let me keep going here and do it all over again just to show you. I'm gonna sell all the ones that have four for the desert habitats. And once I sell one of each, I will then go into the catalog and push square to turn in the whole set. And just so you know, in total, selling one set will net you 2,210 XP. So every set you sell will take you up a full level, guaranteed. Okay, so here I go selling it again, pushing square, and boom. Another 1,300 XP. It's so easy to get the desert habitat collection done for her so go do that one i highly recommend grinding this one out it is so easy to max out this role to rank it up so then you can have access to all those cool legendary animals this is really really awesome and i will max it out now by just simply selling her one of the legendary samples that i have so let's give her this legendary cougar sample and i'm sure it gives like around 400 xp or something like that so that's really cool so yeah, I mean, this is the best advice I can give. I really do hope this guide was great. But before I end this, there is something else I really want to go over. There is a photo option that you can start taking pictures of these animals. So there's a camera that you can buy called the advanced camera. I'm going to show you how to get this. It's really nice, the advanced camera. It's much better than the regular one. So if you want to go hunting and fishing section here, go over one page. There's a full page for the advanced camera. It's 540 go ahead and pick that up should you want to start taking pictures of these animals. And you'll know when the animal is in frame when you see the green pluses along the corners of the center square turn green. And also you can move around while aiming it. So it's really cool. Okay, thank you so very much for watching. And if you found this video helpful or informative in any way, please leave a like and comment down below as well. Let me know anything else you'd like to know about this role. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Say I choose you, Dead Pikachu, and join the Dead Pikachu crew today. Yeah.